Hello everyone and welcome to the teaching show. In the last video we had seen how to estimate the densities of uh, liquid and liquid mixtures. In this video we are going to see how to estimate the value of density of a gas or a gaseous mixture. So uh, for solids and liquids we had used one assumption that uh, density is a weak function of temperature and pressure but for gases we cannot use this assumption as you change the pressure and temperature the volume of the gas changes and hence its density changes so uh, for gases usually we have equation of states equation of states are those equations which connect pressure volume and temperature uh, okay so uh, most common equation of state is the ideal gas equation and it takes the form of PV is equal to nRT n is the number of moles and R is the standard gas constant okay so this is a gas constant its value uh, in different units it is listed in several of the books you can go and check it okay now uh, we all know that ideal gas law or ideal gas equation it holds true only at low pressures or high temperatures but how low the pressure should be and how high the temperature should be we have to make a judgment about it before we are applying ideal gas law okay so uh, usually um, just in uh, you know uh, general terms what we think is that if the temperature is above zero degree and the pressure is around atmospheric pressure then you can make use of ideal gas equation but a more rigorous uh, treatment is given in Huygen and Watson where they give you this criteria okay V by N that is this specific volume specific molar volume that is equal to RT by P if it is greater than 5 liters per mole for a diatomic gas or if it is greater than 20 liters per mole for other gases like ethane, butane, whatever. Okay. So for other gases, if its value is above 20 liters per mole, then you can safely use this equation. Okay. So when I'm saying you can safely use this equation, it means that the error uh, which comes into picture when you use this equation is very small. Okay. So how do I calculate error? Let's say my error I denote by epsilon. Okay. So if this is the error, uh, I have let's say any property x because you know this equation you can use uh, if you know the gas constant, then if you know any of the three quantities P, V, N, and T, then you can calculate the fourth one. So any quantity which you are determining using your ideal gas that I am calling x. Okay. So the value of x which I have calculated using the ideal gas law minus the true value of x divided by the true value in 200 okay so this gives me the percentage error in determining this quantity using ideal gas law it will be less than one percent okay so epsilon will be um, I should say less than one percent this holds true okay so for any question you can go and check uh, before applying ideal gas law if you have a diatomic gas like nitrogen oxygen okay then you go and check whether your specific molar volume is greater than 5 for other gases you check whether it is 20 liters per mole or higher okay if this is the case then whatever value you calculate it is within 1% error and you can safely use ideal gas equation okay now how can you determine the density of the gas using ideal gas law we will just do some mathematical manipulation PV is equal to nRT n is the number of moles how do you calculate number of moles that is mass of the gas divided by the molecular weight that I am denoting by capital M so mass upon molar mass that is equal to n that is the number of moles so I am writing it over here then I rearrange this equation I take m over here so pm by rt that is equal to mass divided by volume which is nothing but density so if you need to calculate density of a gas you can use your ideal gas equation in this form that is pm by rt it's very easy to remember or you can also when you are doing the question you can derive it then and there only 
okay so this is the thing this answers your question when to use your ideal gas equation okay at low pressures high temperature and the combination is given by this group okay and these values you should check before using your ideal gas law okay now how to use it because there is a gas constant which is coming in over here and if you go and check in any book there will be at least seven to eight different r values which are listed and that corresponds to different units of pressure and volume and temperature okay so you cannot always remember all the r values fine so then how do you use this equation because in the problem you will have um, you can get any type of unit right pressure can be given in either mm of hg or it can be given in pascals okay or it can be given in um, bar or atmosphere for each of these units you will have different values of r okay then how to use this equation uh, without remembering all these r values it's very simple you have to just remember one point okay you have to just remember one point and what is that the molar volume of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure conditions okay so let me first define what is standard temperature and pressure condition in short we call it stp standard temperature and pressure the temperature is taken as 0 degree centigrade or i will write 273 kelvin and pressure is taken as 1 atmosphere okay so these are your standard temperature and pressure and the volume occupied by any ideal gas the volume occupied by 1 mole of any ideal gas at this condition is 22.4 liters per mole okay because i am saying 1 mole okay so that's why i am writing 22.4 liters per mole actually it is like when you will see the book it is 22.415 but for numerical point of view just take only one um, after one decimal okay one uh, digit after decimal so you can say it is it occupies 22.4 liters per mole just remember this condition now you will be able to determine um, whatever quantity is asked for an ideal gas without requiring your r value okay how do we do it let's see okay so let me say that this is my standard temperature this is my standard pressure and this is my standard volume okay so ts ps and vs i can write ideal gas law in terms of this so ps vs that is equal to because there, there is only one mole so n is equal to 1 r times ts okay this is my ideal gas law at standard conditions fine now i have some gas okay uh, some ideal gas which is at a different temperature t and a different temperature uh, pressure p and it is n number of moles then i can write pv is equal to nrt okay what i will do is uh, what will be given is that out of these four quantities one of them will be missing and you are trying to calculate one of these quantities using your ideal gas law but you require your value of r so what you do is simply take a ratio of these two equations so divide this equation by the ideal gas equation at standard state okay once you do this this r value gets cancelled and then you are left with pv upon ps vs that is equal to n times t by ts okay whatever the quantities which are there in the denominator you know it you have uh, you know uh, eliminated r from the equation you don't know need its value and then whatever is required then you can calculate from this equation let's take an example and get this point more clear okay it's better if you just use it in a numerical that you know reinforces your concept okay so i'm going to take a very small problem what we are doing is that i have butane what is the chemical formula of butane it's carbon 4 so it is c4 h10 what will be its molecular weight 
let's write down its molecular weight will be uh, atomic weight of carbon is 12 12 for the 48 plus 10 so approximately its molecular weight is 58 okay now this butane it is at a temperature of 360 degree centigrade and it is present at a pressure of 3 atmosphere further it is given that the flow rate to the reactor the mass flow rate to the reactor is 1100 kg per hour okay now you have to calculate the volumetric flow rate it's very simple okay you can use ideal gas law assuming that butane is behaving as an ideal gas now um, ideal gas law is pv is equal to nrt okay so first of all um, let's just say that okay because this is a continuous process i am writing this in terms of flow rates so pv dot is equal to n dot rt okay so my first point should be to calculate n dot from m dot what will be n dot that will be equal to m dot upon m so 1100 divided by 58 and that gives me a value of 18.96 kilomoles per hour or approximately 19 kilomoles per hour okay so i have the value of n dot now in this set of temperature and pressure units i need to have an r value instead of finding that r value what i will do is i will make use of ps ds is equal to r ds divide one equation by the other one so it is p by ps v dot by ds is equal to n dot t by ts i am interested in finding v dot so i will take everything else over there so uh, i have to find out v dot that is equal to n dot t by ts and ps by p and then i have to multiply it with vs okay simply put all the values n dot is 19 now remember one thing whenever you are using a temperature even though these have the values or these have the units of degree centigrade and degree centigrade never use in ideal gas equation temperature in degree centigrade or degree fahrenheit okay always use temperature in kelvin okay because this equation pv is equal to nrt it is derived from the kinetic theory of gases it has some thermodynamic base in thermodynamics we will see that only the kelvin scale is the thermodynamic temperature scale so i am going to use my temperature in kelvin scale over here and not in any other scale so always keep this in mind whenever you are using ideal gas equation never ever put the temperatures in celsius or fahrenheit or any other um, temperature unit except your kelvin okay so i have to convert now temperatures into kelvin i know ts is 273 this is 360 plus 273 and it comes out to be just do the addition what is the temperature you have 633 kelvin pressure you can keep any unit that is not uh, that is immaterial okay so i have pressure is uh, 1 atmosphere upon 3 into Vs right so if you do this uh, calculation then you get the value of V as approximately equal to 329 meter cube per hour I should write 3 in a much better writing okay right so you get the value as 329 meter cube per hour so you have seen I have made use of standard temperature and pressure conditions, STP conditions to solve this problem without remembering the R value. Okay. Now uh, I can also use ideal gas equation in one other way. Let's assume that this butane is now going through a compressor. Okay. And I am compressing it. 
from say now it is at 3 atmosphere let's compress it to 6 atmosphere okay so let's say now I have this is a compressor okay what is the input input is the same butane gas which is now uh, moving at a volumetric flow rate of 329 meter cube per hour and the pressure is 3 atmosphere inlet pressure and temperature is 633 Kelvin. Now when it is coming out it has a pressure let's say this is 0.2 it has a pressure of 6 atmosphere and it is coming out at a temperature of uh, 3 atmosphere uh, no 633 let's take it 700 Kelvin okay so the temperature is now 700 Kelvin you are asked to find what is the volumetric flow rate at the exit you do not know what is the number of moles forget about what we had done in the last uh, problem because there we knew n but just consider this as your fresh problem where I don't know what is n. it's not given in the problem but we know that whatever number of moles are going in, they should be coming out because there is no reaction taking place, only compression is happening. Okay, so n which is going in should be equal to n which is coming out, but I don't know the n. Okay, so um, you can apply ideal gas law. So at the inlet condition, I can apply ideal gas law and find out what is n. PV upon RT will give me n. Then I can put that n value over here and calculate V2. That is one method where you will be applying your ideal gas law two times. Two times you will be doing the calculation and wasting twice the time. Okay. So instead of that, what you should do is again take a ratio. Now don't take the ratio with respect to standard temperature and pressure. What you can do is you can take the ratio of inlet to outlet. Okay. Or outlet to inlet. Whatever suits you. So I am going to write P2 V2 is equal to N R T2 and P1 V1 is equal to N R T1. If I divide these two equations, N and R gets cancelled. Okay. And what I am left with is uh, P2 V2 upon P1 V1 that is equal to T2 by T1. Or I can solve this equation in terms of V2 and I get T2 by T1 into P1 by P2 times V1. Okay. That is going to give me directly my V2. So again, I don't have to remember my R value. I don't have to calculate N. In single step, I should be able to calculate my V2 value. If you go and do this, P1 by P2 is 3 by 6. T2 by T1 is, again remember, temperature, take it in Kelvin scale. Take it on Kelvin scale. Don't use um, Celsius one. Okay, so T2 is 700 divided by 633 into V1, V1 is 329, okay. If you do this, your V2 comes out to be 181.91 meter cube per hour, okay. So, in a single step, you could calculate it. So, always remember, this answers your question, how to use it, okay. So, use it smartly. If you have to find out certain volumetric flow rate, and if you don't remember the R value, don't use a wrong one. Use the standard conditions like the value volume at STP. Make use of that and find out the answer. And if you have such type of problem where at inlet and outlet, you can apply ideal gas equation. Okay, then write ideal gas equation for inlet and outlet. Take a ratio. Thereby, what you are doing is cancelling your R term. Okay, and if your number of moles is the same, then number of moles also get cancelled. If it is not same, then it is retained in the equation. Okay, so you can use it quickly and smartly and get the value. So these are two methods uh, you should use while doing the calculations in this course on material balance. Okay, so I hope you got the point in this uh, video, what I was trying to tell you. If you like this video, please don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. That motivates me a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.